Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark. I'm here with Mr. Nuclear Man. I still have the baby. <laughs> Help me! Help me! Don't worry, baby. That's what we're doing. That's why we're coming to YouTubes every day. We're going to help your generation. We're going to save you from Mr. Nuclear Man. So look what I found, you guys. I have the links listed in there, but this is an incredible thing. I was doing some research on John Goffman so I could tell you about the 90% rule. Now, there was, a new, there was an article that I had a long time ago, and the link is broken, so you can't find it. So I was trying to find that article. Uh, but it is related to, in he, uh, pursuant to the activity that he did after he was at the Berkeley lab. Um, he was in what they call the Plutonium Files Project. It's not just called the Plutonium Project. That's what I found out. That's where they injected plutonium into basically soldiers. And um, I think he was involved in that. And I think after that... Then he became an anti nuke activist when he said what the horrendous effects of it did. And so I think that's why he was so dedicated. I, I don't know. That's my own conjecture because I can't find the documents. But if anybody out there can find the documents, please copy and paste them into a comment on, the, on, on this thing. So the title of this and all of these links, I linked in on this page by uh, the obituary, obituary of uh, John Goffman when he died. And it does talk about his history, and you can follow some of those links. That's what I did to research some of this. I actually went to the school library, and I found this. Nuclear Power and Ecocide, an Adversary View of Nuclear Technology. This man was, now this was written in 1971, and it was in the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. But he knocks it out of the park. This is such a great read. I highlighted some things. And what I want to do is read it out loud to you. Just the parts that I've highlighted, like just these yellow parts, not the whole freaking thing because it's six pages long. But what he says in this, now remember, was written in 1971. Now, John Goffman's work in his biography and... Maybe it was in the, I have links for all these different things for the, uh, for the plutonium effect file. And so, but in one of those two articles, it talks about the 90% rule. And that's where he's talking about, he recommended to the government that they lower the levels of radiation by 90%. That was based on his, his studies and review on a separate issue about the Nagasaki and Hiroshima victims. Because in that article, that's the one that I saw quite a while ago, and the link has been broken. I can't find it, but um, that's the one that he was talking about. The, his conclusion was that the military and the nuclear industry basically underreported. They didn't want him to report 90% of the harm. And the people up the food chain basically just completely denied that radiation was causing harm. And I think it shocked him. I think his service in this entire thing probably damaged his soul because it sounds horrible. So I'm going to read to you some of these highlighted parts because it is really knocks you out the park. Let me start with the premise, the opening sentence, and I'll just try to skip through. I won't read all of this. Our society is based, <clears throat> excuse me, our society is based upon, upon the premise that initiative, innovation, and promotion, all leading to economic profit, will but be, well, by, will, will by their very nature ensure the delivery of goods and services that will steadily upgrade the quality of life for the greatest number. Hmm. Uh, we should be, able to easily create this high quality of life for any reasonably sized population in the United States. That's the caveat. The threats posed by food adulteration, poisonous chemicals of agriculture and commerce, and radioactivity may individually or by synergistic energy create ecocide. <clears throat> we do not have appropriate institutions that will guarantee an early alert to the potential possibly subtle secondary effects of technology. 
If no early feedback information becomes available concerning potentially detrimental consequences, the technologically based industry grows apace. If not, ne excuse me, grows apace, and the unanticipated detrimental effects will necessarily afflict the entire population. Beyond the educational level, there are thousands of nuclear engineers, health physicians, biomedical scientists with well-established careers predicted upon the continuation and growth of nuclear energy and technology, in particular nuclear electricity generation. And this doesn't count the lower echelon, some 140,000 atomic industrial workers. Indeed, the government regulators themselves have a not inconsiderable stake in the nuclear energy enterprise, with a large number at stake in the continuation and growth of this industry. So, get what he's saying here, 1971. It is, common to, it is common to find an amazingly unbroken wall of optimism about the future of technology for mankind. In nuclear ener energy, now in 1971, one might consider the difficult position of AEC Chairman Glenn Seberg, who has proudly admitted his position as a prime salesman for nuclear electricity generation and his intention to create pluto a plutonium future for all of us. Is it truly difficult to understand why Dr. Seaborg is having a difficult is having difficulty facing the realization that the hazard of ionizing radiation is far greater, 20 to 30 times greater than we thought a decade ago. It would be unrealistic for any of us to hope that dangerously misguided technological industrial endeavors are going to come to an end through a economic suicide of the capital investing entrepreneur, B, career and job suicide of the technologists and workers, so whistleblowing won't work. E C, ego and prestige suicide by leaders, promoters, and apologists for the uh, enterprise. To argue that the higher morality should guide any of these groups that with their varied vested interests is simply to produce a totally unreal and unrewarding image of men. And morality won't even be visible no, or, and morality won't even visibly enter into the consideration, for the mechanism of rationalization will surface in abundance to protect against even the most obviously indefensible position. So we got what? We have Fukushima, we have the cop beatings, and we have the torture tapes, and that's exactly what's happening here. Wow. Now this was written in 1971. Then he goes on to talk about the broad base of constituencies, all the different people that could come together. And then he talks about this. Mm. The fear of capital loss is, without a doubt, a fantastically powerful motivating force to continue even the most blatantly eco-mad endeavors. We are a culture that worships success, and defensiveness breeds tunnel vision, self-deception, rationalization, anything but objectivity. I would answer, okay, so he's talking about proposals. He has this whole big long part of this to talk about what he thinks how it should go, okay? First, the problem lies in your, in your direction. How dare you make such brazen analysis of, of reality? To this I would reply that the time for tranquilizers is over. Second, insuperable economic hurdles would prevent implementations of those proposals. This is why I would suggest the development of a powerful activist constituency to demand that the economic hurdles be overcome. I suspect that there is a chance for some imaginative process, even in economics, once it is realized that the heat is on and will stay on. Ecocide is too high a price to pay for non-imaginative lethargy. So in 1971, John Goffman was calling for an, a powerful activist constituency. That's us. 
Aren't you afraid of us, Mr. Nuclear Man? Oh, I'm starting to be. I'll tell you what, brother, I'm taking that baby back. Go, go and take the baby. Thank you, thank you. I'm giving this baby back from you. We're not going to leave her with you. Now you get out of here. Er, let go of her. You glued her to you, you rat bastard. Oh, oh. Ah, there we go, baby. Don't cry. Good boy. So there you go, you guys. I want you to check out the links that I'm going to put into this video. Because John Goffman really was a humanitarian, and that's what the nuclear industry has been doing. They have been quieting every single person, and I think this is a good idea. I'm glad I did this research so I could talk to you about it. This is the kind of stuff I hope to be doing more of, and um, sweet dreams. I'm going to be posting mostly at night. It's 10 to 9 right now because I have a full day, so you guys can be looking for my videos, like, I guess, in the morning. <laughs> Bye. Sweet dreams.